Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about Gradio, which is a platform for building interfaces using Python. So um, I was looking at different learning material for uh, learning what Gradio is and what capabilities it gives us. But their quick start on their own website is actually pretty good, very comprehensive. So we're going to go over what they have on their own website and I'm going to show you what different features Gradio provides to us. So quick start. The pre prerequisite is Gradio requires Python 3.8 or higher and that's all. So if your Python is version 3.8 or higher, you don't need anything. Um, you can just import Gradio and use it. So what does Gradio do? One of the best ways to share your machine learning model, API, or data science workflow with others is to create an interactive app that allows your users or colleagues to try out the demo in their browsers. Gradio allows you to build demos and share them all in Python. And usually it is just a few lines of code. So let's get started. And here we see a Hello World project. So to get Gradio running with a simple Hello World example, follow these three steps. The first step is to install Gradio using pip. So either on your um, local machine or on Google Cloud or any other environment that you work on, you can write pip install Gradio. You run the code below as a Python script or or in a Jupyter notebook, uh, what we are going to do, um, I'm going to show you some spaces on Hugging Face that actually use Gradio um, to build an interface between their users and the artificial intelligence models that are available on Hugging Face. But for now, let's go over um, different steps for um, running Gradio, and then we'll see what different features are available. So you can shorten the name Gradio. So in this line, you can say import Gradio as gr. So whenever you say gr dot something, for example, here gr dot interface, it means that you are trying to access the interface um, from the Gradio library. So we shorten the imported name to gr for better readability of code using Gradio. This is a widely adopted convention that you should follow so that anyone, anyone Working with your code can easily understand it. The demo below uh, will appear automatically within the Jupyter Notebook um, or pop in a browser on a local host and yes, that address if running from a script. So here uh, we have two different text fields. One um, is called name, the other is called output. One you can write in, the other one is read only so I cannot select it. There are two different um, buttons here. So there's a clear button, there's a submit button. Let's see if they work. I don't think they work here, but so the clear works. Clear comes um, with the text box itself. So let's see what happens if you submit. So you just give your name and it tells you hello your name. And you can see this is the code that does this for us. Pretty simple. All right, when developing locally, if you want to run the code as a Python script, you can use the Gradio CLI to launch the application in reload mode, which will provide seamless and fast development. Learn more about reloading in auto reloading guide. So you can just say Gradio app.py and it will run your um, Python code. Note, you can also do Python app.py, but it won't provide the automatic reload mechanism. So that would be the difference if you do Gradio over Python. Now let's go over the interface class and what it does. You'll notice that in order to make the demo, we created a gr.interface. 
this interface class can wrap any Python function with a user interface. In the example above, we saw a simple text-based function, but the function could be anything from music generator to a tax calculator to the prediction function of a pre-trained machine learning model. The core interface class is initialized with three required parameters. So these parameters are fn, which is the function to wrap a user interface around. There are inputs, which, which, which tells you like which components to use for the input. For example, is it text? Is it image? Is it audio? And similar to inputs, outputs. So that says which components to use for the output. Is the output text, image, or labor? label? This is very compatible with um, generative AI applications because we usually have um, text to something. So you see there text to text or text to image or text to audio. Um, Gradio also has video, so we can have text to video. Um, and so basically covers all of the inputs or all of the common inputs that we use um, for um, AI models. So we are pretty much covered um, for different types of files and we can use this interface for our machine learning and um, generative AI applications. So let's take a closer look at these components used to provide input and output. Let's have a look at components attributes. We saw some simple textbook components in the previous examples, but what if you want to change how the UI components look or behave? Let's say you want to customize the input text field. For example, you wanted it to be larger and have a text placeholder. If you use the actual class for textbook instead of using the string shortcut, you have access to much more customizability through components. So for example, if we run this code, then let's say I'm going to here enter my name here. So my name is Professor Reza. I'll submit it and it does the same thing. It just says, hello, Professor Reza. So you can see that the text box here is not as tall as this one because here we set the lines to two. So this has two lines, but this one has only one line. So that's the difference. We can also have multiple inputs and output components. So suppose you had a more complex function with multiple inputs and outputs. In the example below, we define a function that takes a string, boolean, and number, and returns a string and a number. Take a look, how, take a look at how you pass a list of input and output components. So this is the code, and let's see how the interface looks like. So this part is our input. There is a name, so the name. Is it morning? Let's say it is morning and the temperature maybe is 45. It is getting pretty chilly recently. So if I submit it, then good morning Reza. It is 45 degrees today. And the number we see here is the same temperature, but in Celsius. So it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 7.22 degrees Celsius. You simply wrap the components in a list. Each component in the inputs list corresponds to one of the parameters of the function in order. Each component in the outputs list corresponds to one of the values returned by the function, again, in order. Okay, now let's have a look at an image example. Gradio supports many types of components such as image, data frame, video, or label. Let's try an image to image function to get a feel for these. So this is the code and this space isn't working. It's okay. Um, we will show you an image to image model on hugging face so that you can see that. Um, let's not worry about it. For now, 
Let's see what the rest of the document says. When using the image component as input, your function will receive a NumPy array with the shape, height, width, and three, which is the three dimensions of the image, where the last dimension represents the RGB value. We'll return an image as well in the form of a NumPy array. You can also set the data type used by the components with the type equals keyword argument. For example, if you wanted your function to take a file path to an image instead of a NumPy array, the input image component could be written as gr.image type equals file path, and you can set the shape. Also, note that our input image component comes with an audit button, which allows for cropping and zooming into images. Manipulating images in this way can help reveal biases or hidden flaws in a machine learning model. You can read more about the mini components and how to use them in the Gradio docs. All right, so the next one is chatbots. Gradio includes a high-level class gr.chatinterface, which is similar to gr.interface, but is specifically designed for chatbot user interfaces. The gr.chatinterface class also wraps a function, but this function must have a specific signature. The function should take two arguments, message and then history. The arguments can be named anything, but must be in this order. So message is a string representing the user's input and history is a list of lists representing the conversations up until that point. Each inner list consists of two str representing a pair. So it would be the user input and the bot response. Your function should return a single string response, which is the bot's response to the particular user input message. Other than that, gr.chat interface has no required parameters, though several are available for customization of the UIs. So this is just an example um, with just this simple code. We can create a chatbot. Um, obviously, the, the, there's no model connected to it, so it's not going to give us a response, but I can just write it here, press enter, and it will just give me something. It, it's always going to say yes. So if I write, how are you? No. Are you not okay? All right, let's. So this is just randomly creating either yes or no. So that's the random choice between yes and no. But technically, if you have a model that can generate um, responses to prompts, then you can use this to create a chatbot. We can clear the chat, we can undo, undo again, we can retry something or just clear the whole chat. There are also more complex features available in Gradio, which gives us the power to create more complicated interfaces. So one of them are the blocks. They provide more flexibility and control. Gradio offers two approaches to build apps. The first one is the interface and chat interface, which provide a high level abstraction for creating demos that we've discussed so far. But there's also blocks. Blocks, there are a low level API for designing web apps with more flexible layouts and data flows. Blocks allows you to do things like feature multiple data flows and demos, control where components appear on the page, and handle complex data flows. So for example, outputs can serve as inputs to other functions. We can also update properties or visibilities of components based on user interaction. And all of it is still in Python. So if this customizability is what you need, try blocks instead. Now let's have a look at an example of blocks. We call it hello blocks. Let's take a look at a simple example. Note how the APR here differs from interface. So this is the code and this is how 
the interface looks like. So if you look at it, we created a block. So all this is in the block now. Then I have a text box, which is name. I have another text box for the output. I have the greet button. And we have a method for greet button click. So let's say my name is Reza. And if I say greet, it just says hello Reza. Things to note here. So blocks are made with a with clause and any component created inside this clause is automatically added to the app. Components appear vertically in the app in the order they are created. So later we will cover customizing these layouts. A button was created and then a click event listener was added to this button. The API for this should look similar, like an interface, the click method takes a Python function, input components and output components. Now let's see how we can add more complexity. So here's an app to give you a taste of what's possible with blocks. So feel free to go over the code, but basically um, using this code, we can create a block now Inside this block, we have different tabs. In each tab, we have different components. So there are text boxes and buttons here. There's an accordion menu that we can close and open. And in the second app, we have um, two images. So one is for an input image. We can drop images here. This is for the output image. Um, and then, so for example, let's see if it actually works. So if I have this and I click flip, so it flips the image for me. So there's a lot more going on here. We'll cover how to create complex blocks apps like this in the building with blocks section for you. Congrats. Now you're more familiar with the basics of Gradio. Go to our next guide for more about the key features. So yeah, this was a very brief tutorial of Gradio and what features it provides us.